Welcome to the Lois Banks Show. I'm your host, Lois Banks. Today we have a special man of God in our presence, Bishop Lionel Parsons. Bishop, thank you for coming to the Lois Banks Show. It is my absolute pleasure to be here. Been looking forward to it, been looking forward to being with you and your wonderful family. It's a golden opportunity for us to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Bishop, um, uh, my spirit is just so excited. I've been waiting um, a long time to meet you. We both have a mutual friend by mm. the name of Maggie Womack, and she told, she shared some special information about the integrity of your heart. Um, I found out through Maggie that you walk in such a special level of integrity with the Lord, something that's so rare um, I wanted to have you as a guest um, on the show. You actually have several businesses. Yes, I do. That you own and mm -hmm. you operate, and you do not receive a salary from the church. Can you talk a little bit about how the Lord dealt with your heart and your spirit and your mind to walk in um, such a special level of integrity? Well, let, let me let me let me start at the beginning. I think uh, it'll give us a better perspective. When the Lord had called me to ministry, I just was so overwhelmed. Uh, how would you say it? With the social behavior of ministers uh, and their they they they're ministering in, from my narrow, linear perception for just money. And so when he called me uh, to the ministry, I, I, and, and you know, we know workmen is where we have this higher muzzle out the ox, I shred it out the corn. But I, I thought that I didn't want to uh, be dependent upon the general congregation, especially when I started my church, we was in a very challenged, challenged community, and I just refused to take overwhelmed people money. And so I, I told him if I was going to be a preacher to, to make a way for me to have my own money. And I pursued that to this very day. Um, I haven't taken anything from my church. We, uh, um, we do a lot of work in the in, in challenge communities. And, and, and one of the things that we do, I refuse to take money from poor people. Now, until I teach them how to make money. And every young man that comes into our church, in one way or another, uh, we transform their lives. I'll give you an example, a guy came in my church, we were in the very uh, heart of North Philadelphia, in the uh, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania region. And um, he came in my church with uh, two guns and a box of bullets. And we began to minister to him over a period of time uh, he his life changed, and he is now a supervisor of a major corporation, uh, and has done well, making ninety six thousand dollars a year. Beautiful, beautiful. Another young man came in our church. He was making twenty one thousand. He now made he now makes two hundred and sixty two thousand dollars a year. And so we try to empower people, teach them how to access wealth so that uh, the Bible talks about nobody hearing a poor man. And a lot of times, and I was saying this uh, shortly before we got on the air, we need a functional gospel, a socially functional gospel that can reach people where they are, not where we want them to be. Okay, where do you see the church right now as far as um, ministers receiving payment, um, churches going into foreclosure. Can you talk a little bit about that and how the church can take a different viewpoint mm -hmm. and build the, the kingdom of Christ? Well, I've been preaching this for about 15 years. And I told many of my friends that they were going to have to find another way to bring revenue into the church. They have, they're going to have to have, uh, come up with creative ways uh, to bring wealth in the church. Uh, and they didn't hear it. Now, because we solely depend on the, on the congregation for income, uh, when the economy was devastated, so were your members. And because you solely depend on 
those tithes and offerings as income for the church, uh, when that ceased, the money ceased. When the economy uh, became overwhelmed, then so did your members become overwhelmed, and thus you find churches going into foreclosure because they did not do anything uh, with creative wealth. Uh, you have to know, and God will give it to each and every leader. You have to want to do it. It's very comfortable to just take an offering and do nothing. You know, but you to, today's church uh, is looked upon as hoarder because they don't do anything else to bring in revenue. They just take the money. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. I'm saying that as the church, we need not that our good be evil spoken of. Well, how do you balance um, your businesses and the ministry? Because a lot of ministers say they, they find it difficult to do both. How do you manage well, both? Um, because you, 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 for me, you have to make Christianity, you have to make loving God a lifestyle, not an occupation. And if it's, an, if, if it's a lifestyle, then it's a part of everything you do. You see, I just can't be a Christian in the church and then outside of the church, something else. So it, in my business, God is shown in my business. So it's not very difficult for me because God is in, when I'm in church, I'm presenting God. When I'm in business, I'm presenting God. God is a part of my, my, my entire being. So what happens in the church is people isolate their relationship with God for the church. And you know, we, we've been tortured with the boogeyman of religion. Everything is the devil. And it, it isn't. Everything is in the devil. So by the time you get to the Christian, the secular world has mastered uh, and take hold, to have taken a stronghold over everything that God had really created for the Christian to have a stronghold over. Like television, I remember years ago, um, years ago, I'm, I'm, I'm telling my age now, but uh, you couldn't even have television in your home. Just recently, major Christian uh, communities just started going to the movies. So when God opened up that avenue and that door, we didn't take advantage of it. So now your empire is controlled by secular uh, individuals. And I'm saying secular, I'm talking about non-Christian, not bad people, just non-Christian. And they can kill, they control the theater, mm -hmm. they control all, all of corporate America. And we don't because everything is the devil. Okay. And so if you don't look at life as the devil, then it has to be God. Well, you, you walk in such a, a rare, um, rare quality. I've never seen um, this type of integrity uh, demonstrated in my Christian walk. That's why I wanted to have you on my show. Um, what words of encouragement would you give to other men and women of God who are um, seeking to build the kingdom of Christ, where, where in the scripture, can you share some scriptures that the Lord gave you as you made that transition not to take finances from the church? Well, let me give, let me give you one scripture. Uh, the one, muzzle not the ox that shreddeth out the corn. Now, it didn't say the muzzle, don't muzzle oxes. It just said don't muzzle the one that's doing the work. I think what the Christian community needs to understand is that everybody that has a title doesn't necessarily need to get paid. Now that's just a reality. And because we don't look at it like that, many people attempt to take advantage of the church because it's an easy form of income. The Old Testament said that the priests would come and bless your fields, and if your fields did not increase, did not yield to you something, then you did not have to give to the priest. Now this is biblical information, we don't wanna preach this. And then also said, this is what Jesus said, Jesus said to his disciples, he said, we have no money to pay our debts nor to feed our people. And he said, go down to the river and you're gonna find in the mouth of the fish money. And when you get that, you then pay for you and you pay for me. 
I don't have a responsibility to take care of anybody, and I'm a bishop, and I teach this to everyone in my church. You don't have the responsibility to take care of anyone simply because of a title. You have a responsibility to take care of those that produce. So if a person does not produce, you have no biblical, no social, no moral responsibility to take care of them. And that's what we need to understand in the church. The church has to empower you before they take before you take care of them. Wow, Bishop. Um, you, you, yeah, you, you, you just can't say I'm a preacher and, and, and because you have the title of reverend be taken care of. You have to produce for your congregation. Bishop, can you give examples um, of how the Lord has blessed your businesses as you made a decision not to take a salary from the church? Well, I think that's where favor comes in at. We're doing a project now, and in, in, in we're turning, um, we're building a um, student housing, 110 dorms for some of the local schools in the, in the region. Uh, that will bring about $80,000 a month. We did that simply because we had people contribute, businesses contribute to us because they know that I wasn't getting the money. Well, you know, Bishop, I um, move in the gifts of, of the Spirit mm -hmm. and so do you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you and I had a discussion before uh, we did this interview and mm -hmm. I know that miracles and signs and wonders follow your mm -hmm. ministry. Mm -hmm. Can you open up your heart and uh, share some of the miracles and the signs and wonders that follow your ministry because of, because of the integrity that you walk in and because of the obedience that you walk in. Well, if you will allow me, and I do thank you for being here. It, it, it's such a great blessing to share with you. And I, I just see in the spirit realm with the, where the Lord is taking this whole ministry uh, to another level, different dimension that we just don't see on regular Christian broadcasting. So I do. I do thank the Lord for being a part of it. Well, you, this is this is this this. Is, let's talk about the body of miracles. Yes. Uh, the body of miracles is activated from principle. Uh, let me give an example. If you don't embrace the principles of the Bible, you cannot operate in the flow of the Bible or the flow of mi miracles. I could heal the sick and raise the dead, but if I don't love you, it deactivates that. I mean, so uh, the principle has to be there before the power. And that's, that's how it has happened in my church and, and ministry with me. The principle has to always be before the power, the principle of your office. Yes. Just like the President of the United States, he was just a common man before he became president. We need to know that when we put on these, when we put on these titles, that you now have to be connected intimately to principle if you want God's power. My principle is that I must love you in spite of. He was moved by compassion, then he began to teach and heal. So he, there was a principle that caused him to do all those mighty works. Yes. And so uh, when a lady came in my church one time and she was carried in under her arms, she had cancer on her spine. She couldn't walk. God came into the place for her. Yes. It doesn't come for you. When I say you, us the preachers. He comes for them and he gets to them through you. It doesn't come for you. He comes for them to get to them through you. And so when she came in, she was carried in. And we, 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 we prayed and this is what the Lord said to me. He said, I never prayed hmm. for healing. He said, I decreed it. Yes, he did. So he told me to look at the woman and decree healing, yes. wholeness, mm -hmm. deliverance. Yes. When I said that, I can feel the anointing right now. Yes. When I said that, the power of God dropped in that place. And the woman leaped up out the chair. And at the end of the service, she walked out. Yes. No support at all. Praise God. And, and so I said, well, maybe she's going to have a relapse. 
You know, because sometimes we talk about God, but we, it's just like when, they knocked, when Peter knocked on the door. They were really praying, with, with, but didn't believe. And so I thought she was going to have a relapse. When she got to the door, she began to literally dance in the spirit. Yeah, praise God. And I knew that that was God. And from that day on, I never prayed for a healing. I never prayed for a deliverance. I never prayed for a wholeness. I decree it because the Bible said that he made us just a little lower than the angel, yes. than, than, than El Elohim, yeah. and so than, than himself. So the angels, it's God. The protocol of heaven is God, man, then angel. Yes. And demonic forces are ushered in by the angel, Lucifer, or Satan now. Yes. And you have authority over everything he does. Yes. So all you have to do is decree it. Well, Bishop, um, we have people in the viewing audience who are going through health issues. Will you look into the camera and decree healing and, and wholeness into their life? Prophet, it would be my pleasure. Today is a golden opportunity for you to feel and hear and touch the power of God. We are not, it don't take forever. There's a scripture in the Bible where the centurion came to God and God just spoke to his servant, spoke a word and healed his servant. So I'm speaking to you right now, wherever you might be and whatever you might be going through. And there's a lot of, not just physical, I feel it just as, just as if you were sitting here. There's mental and emotional healing that needs, to be, that needs to take place right now. I decree wholeness in the name of Jesus, yeah. in your mind, in your spirit. I rebuke that suicide spirit in the name of Jesus. Yeah. There's a kidney, you're waiting for a kidney transplant. Uh, that kidney is healed right now Glory in the God. name. There's a band around somebody's head, like almost a migraine headache yes. all the time. Yes. I decree it to be gone. I decree yes. it in the name of Jesus, healing, com command it to, to loose you, I set you free right now yes. in the name of Glory Jesus. We thank you for all the listening yes, audience. Lord. Whatever their needs might be, we send out the wind of deliverance. We send out the wind of healing. And thank God for the victory. We do need your report. So you please contact Prophet Lois and so she can know that the victory has been won. Glory to God. Um, talk a little bit about obedience and the importance of um, walking in obedience to the Lord. Well, um, you have people that, that really want to be obedient to God. Then you have some people that want to be used by God. They don't, it only, it only happens simultaneously when you mature in God. So you have to have one or the other in the beginning and then develop yourself to where you can do them both at the same time. A lot of times, Obedience need to be before use. I mean, Paul said to, to Mark, he said, you're not ready for me now. You can't come with me now. But when Mark developed a little bit, then he called for him. And so uh, a lot of time when we talk about obedience to God, it's, it, it's, it, 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 it can go weird sometimes okay. because we don't have the maturity in God. And you need, you need a maturity to properly interpret, interpret obedience. Yes. Obedience will never be something, when God asks you to do something, it will never be something that you don't know. He will only ask you to go places you've never been, but he'll never ask you to do things you don't know. Okay, wow. What type of blessings will come to the person who learns how to... Um, obey the Lord and also mature mm -hmm. well that, that's to open up the window of heaven and pull you out of blessing you have not room enough to receive those are the kinds of blessings I was, I was, in, a, I was in a financial scrape not too long ago and um, just uh, we had some, 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 an investment that we had going on was yielding a lot of money it shut down and when it shut down I put my foot up I, I, 
rested back in my chair and put my foot up on my feet up on the desk, and I started laughing. And one of the ministers in the church uh, said, "Bishop, are you all right?" And I said, "Yeah." He, said, you know, he thought I was losing my mind. I started laughing because I was wondering what avenue he was going to use to now provide money. People need to understand, don't get caught up with, with, with where you get it from because God is gonna always change vehicles of blessing mm -hmm. so that you never depend on that when you depend on him. Exactly. And, 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 and when you're obedient, yes. not obedient to your neighbor, mm -hmm. not obedient to your viewers, right. but obedient, now obedient to God is different from what, what my neighbor say I should do. Mm -hmm. Obedience to God is what the conversation that you and God have. Yes. When I'm obedient like that, I know no weapon formed against me will prosper, even a financial. So three weeks later, mm -hmm. a half a million dollars came in. Praise God. Praise God. Because I know I'm doing what he called me to do. Yes. But it took a level of maturity to define, to, to see what he actually wanted me to do. Well, you know, Bishop, when you were talking about obedience, I can remember... Uh, years ago, um, going through a financial situation, I was believing and trusting God. Mm -hmm. And I remember the Lord asking me to get up and go to my ATM machine and draw money that I knew was mm -hmm. not well, yeah. in that account. Mm -hmm. um, I got up and I was obedient. I did what the Lord said. And the ATM machine stated that I had reached my limit for the day. I, I got out of line and was headed back to my vehicle and he told me to get back in line mm -hmm. and draw more money out. So I did it. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know where the money was coming from. Mm -hmm. Then he, he told me to go to the mall and purchase some clothing that I um, had asked him for for mm -hmm. my children. And when I went past another ATM machine, he told me to take out more money. Bishop, I don't know where that money was coming from. I, I purchased the clothes just the way the Lord um, mm -hmm. Um, wanted me to then he told me to take part of that money and to treat myself mm -hmm. um, take myself out to, uh, to for a meal mm -hmm. I was I was debating whether or not I should obey that actual um, thought that the Lord gave me because I was I, I knew I had enough money mm -hmm. left to pay my bills and if I took part of that money to you know purchase a meal I, I wouldn't know how, how I was gonna pay the bill mm -hmm. But I did what the Lord told me to do, and I, and I can remember to this day sitting at the table uh, um, at the restaurant trying to chew my food by faith, trying to swallow it by faith, and trying to figure out how I was going to pay that bill. But I did what the Lord told me to do, and I, I actually went to hand over whatever m money was left in my hand. And when they ran my name through the computer, they said, you're completely paid in full. Well, you know, that sounds strange to the non-believer. It really does. That sounds strange mm -hmm. to the non-believer. But that has happened repeatedly. Uh, and look, give me an example. Guy came to my church one time and he was preaching the gospel and he said, listen, he said, uh, I need somebody, I need, I need a number of people to give 1300 Now, you know, people have issues with that. Mm -hmm. $1,300. So mm -hmm. I, I got up and I gave $1,300. And he said before Wednesday, he said by Wednesday, you're going to get, everybody that participated in this particular offering is going to get a miracle, a blessing. Okay. And so I gave the 1300 Wednesday, that was on Sunday evening. Wednesday, at 2 o'clock, Wednesday afternoon, a partner called me, business, excuse me, mm -hmm. called me mm -hmm. and said, uh, Bishop, um, I think I'm going to do this. I owed $121,065 the, as the balance of my note on my church. He said, I'm paying off your church. He said, I don't know why. Praise I'm paying God. your church off. Praise God. He gave me a check that Wednesday afternoon for yes. $121,065. Yes. Now, that sounds strange to non-believers. But there's nothing that Jesus has done that was not strange in the way he did it. So we should not be so 
overwhelmed when God tells us to do strange things. Yes. Because his whole relationship with humanity has been a strange walk with. Yes. Uh, 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 by faith and not by sight relationship. Yes. So that kind of experience that you talk about, many of my members have talked about yes. in my church. They go and they know they, they know they had nothing in their bank account. Exactly. They go, I mean, T.D. Jakes have said, T.D. Jakes said one time, he said, if you ask me where my money come from, I, how I pay all these bills and stuff, I can never tell you. Mm -hmm. He just, I just know it's there when the Lord get finished at the end of the day, yes. blessing me. Yes. And that's that's what we, we're believers. We're, we're faith, we're faith, we're faith travelers. We believe God for what he says and that he will provide for us. Yes. And he has done it. He said, I've never seen yes. the righteous forsaken nor his seed baking bread. Yes. He has taken care of us every step of the way. And sometimes, the challenges that we have are to mold us for the victories we will receive. Yes. So I, 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 all of it is good to me. Yes. That's why Paul could sing going into the prison. Yes. He said, because whatever state I find my in, myself in, they, therein I'll be content. I know that God is in it. And that's really where we're at today in terms of ministry, in terms of broadcast, in terms of purpose and desire. Yes. Yes. We need to trust God that he's going to do it. If it's not here, then he's going to send up to send us to an Egypt where it is. Yes. He's going to make a way for you somehow. All of Israel went to Egypt. Yes. To get what Egypt had so Israel could win. Yes. Praise God. Well, Bishop, I would like for you to pray mm -hmm. a prayer of salvation mm -hmm. for the television audience and invite the television audience to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be my pleasure. We just thank the Lord. Just just touch your television right now. Uh, it is not very complicated. It is just accepting him as your savior, as your source of help. So Father, we thank you right now for all those that are out there, that are touching, that need you to come, in into, come into their lives for for not only their lives, but for their children and their husbands. We ask th that you show them a mighty move of God, that if they will come, you will save their families. There's somebody out there with some trouble right now domestically, but if you give your life to the Lord, accept him as your Lord and Savior. Simple words like this, like, 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 like this here. Lord, come into my life. Make me whole. I accept you as my Redeemer, my Savior. That's it. Simple words like that. Just come into my life. Make me whole. I accept you. I accept you as my redeemer and my savior. And your life will immediately start changing. This time next month, you're going to be glad you did it. So we thank you. Bless them. Make them a great blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Their deliverance, yes. their wholeness, their, their might, their power, and their destiny. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Bishop, for coming to the Lost Show. My pleasure, my pleasure, Prophet. My